and welcome back to mini masterclasses for the French horn. Today we are going to revisit some of the topics we talked about last week and also introduce some new things to think about and practice going forward. So let's get started. Remember that anytime we go to play we want to be sitting with our best posture, feet flat on the floor, never too tense or too slouchy, just a nice neutral so that when we go to breathe and use our air we have a nice open airstream and there's no tension that we're creating anywhere. Remember that for our hand position in our bells, even though it's kind of weird to put our hands in our bells, you wanna have your hand like you're giving a handshake, your thumb will be on top, you wanna cup your hand slightly, and fingertips against the side of the bell furthest away from you, and only go in as far as where your first thumb knuckle starts to meet the bell taper. As you can see, there's a lot of room in there still, and that'll help your sound project and come out. But having our hand there will help our tuning and our tone, which is really important for us horn players. So remember, slightly cupped handshake in as far as our first thumb knuckle meeting the bell taper. And regardless of hand size or horn size, that's a very good jumping off point. There may be notes where you have to adjust your hand slightly for tuning wise but it's always good to make sure you start with the proper hand position as well. Remember that for the best posture and the best playing for us, we want to be always bringing our horn to us. You never want to put your horn on your leg and go to the horn. That is going to create some posture and tension problems that we don't really need. You can bring your horn to you and then adjust your leg, or you can simply bring your horn to you and support it with your right hand, but never slouch to meet your instrument. Great. So today, the first thing we are going to talk about is our concert F major scale. You'll remember that horn is a transposing instrument. So for us, that is our C major scale. Um, it's really tricky to get the hang of some of the transpositions for horn. Uh, the concert pitch to horn pitch is a tricky one. So I thought I would explain it a little bit. It's okay if you don't understand the first time. It's just important that at least you're aware that horn is a transposing instrument and concert pitch will never be identical to our pitch. We're gonna have to do some mental math to get the right pitch for us. So one way to think of it is that the written pitch is always higher than the sounding pitch. So if our written pitch is a C, the F down here is the one that's sound. Okay, so if it's C, then F. And because we're an F, when we play our C, an F is the sounding pitch. Now, the F is the concert pitch, the C is the one we're playing. So you have to think about what it takes, what type of interval it takes to make up the difference from F to C. So if we're using our horn, and we're not even thinking about concert pitches, but just the distance from F to C, it'll be F, G, a, B, C. Or if you're in the key of F, F, G, A, B flat, C. But it's five notes, that perfect fifth interval, which will always be the same. Um, so anytime you have a concert pitch, you can count up five notes in the scale to get that perfect fifth, which will lead us to what our note would be. For example, if you're in G and you think up G, a, B, C, D. Concert G is our D. If you're in B flat, B flat, C, D, E flat, F. Concert B flat is our F. So one way to think about this is to try to take the concert pitch and count up five notes in the scale or a perfect fifth. And that'll help you kind of find a cheat to find our note. Just by virtue of practicing, you'll get pretty used to which concert pitches are which notes on the horn, but it's always good to have a rule of thumb just in case. So as I said, today we are starting with concert F or F, G, A, B flat, C, our C scale. You've probably heard about key signatures before. The key signature of the C scale is the one with no sharps or flats. So let's get started on this scale. Concert F, our C, I'm just pulling it up on the scale sheet right here. Let's start 
with the first five notes. We're not going to go in the same rhythm on the scale sheet, but it will be the same pitches. So we know that the first five notes of concert F, our C scale, starting on C, C, D, E, F, G. I'm going to play these right now, and I'm going to slur them on the way up. You can join in the second time I do it. One, two, we're ready. Good, let's play those five notes. C, D, E, F, G. The first five pitches of our C scale together. One, two, we're ready. Excellent. Now, let's start on G and take it all the way to the top. So this is going to be G, A, B, C. Let's also play these twice. So I'll play the first round. You can join in on the second. And I'm also going to slur. One, two, I'm ready. One more time. One, two, we're ready. Great. Remember, if you need help hitting some of these pitches, it's always good to sing the scale and to mouthpiece buzz. Luckily, our C scale fits pretty well in our range, but just know for other scales, you always want to practice singing and buzzing if you need to hit those pitches. Let's put this scale together, um, at least the ascending half of it. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. In this lesson, I'm going to give fingerings for the double horn, so that's the horn with the thumb bow. If you play a single horn, just make sure you consult a fingering chart, but luckily, for this scale, all the pitches will be the same whether you're on double, well, all the fingerings for the pitches will be the same whether you're on double or single horn. The only difference being if you are on a double horn, make sure you press your thumb valve on A all the way up and back down. You can take it off once you're on G, okay? So from G, no thumb valve. Once you're on A, yes, thumb valve. And for single, you don't have to worry about that. It's just the same pitches. Let's play the ascending half of our concert F, our C scale. I'll play it once alone, then you can join in. One, two, we're ready. Let's do that together. One, two, we're ready. Make sure every time you go to play, you're using your very best air. Like we talked about last time, you can do some breaths before you play. But just make sure that your air is always the first thing you rely on when you play. Because we're brass instruments, our air is our fuel. That's what's creating our sound. You never want to forget about it. It's first priority. So now that we've gone to the top of the scale, let's go to the top and take it on down. So remember that it can be tricky to start a higher note with a good da articulation. There's some things you can do to practice hitting notes that are higher and make them feel a little bit easier. So on that C, da, I'm going to play the lower octave C. Da, that's going to help me hear the upper C to audiate the top C. And remember, when you buzz, it should feel as relaxed as when you sang and as resonant. I'm going to do a siren up to that upper C to get my air and my embouchure up to that level. One more time. And you want to remember how that feels like. Take into account how fast your air was going and what your embouchure felt like, so that when you start on that note, it makes it a little bit easier. After the siren, you should actually just start on that note. So I'm going to do that right now. Ah, hearing it before. 
trying to bring that pitch up. So when you go to play on your horn, remember the airspeed and the embouchure setup you had while buzzing and try to stay very relaxed and articulate just that top C. I'll do it first. Good. Let's play that pitch together, just that top C. Good. And you can try that with any note that you feel like is the top of your range. Any high notes, the tendency is to tense up, and that actually makes it harder for the air to get through and to have a good tone quality on it. So you want to make sure you're attacking them the most relaxed way that you can. And if a note is too high for you, start a little lower and work your way up. Let's take our, our C scale, starting at the top, coming all the way down, nice and slow, slurred. I'll do it once by myself, then you can join in. One, two, we're ready. Let's do it together. One, two, we're ready. have the scale, let's put it together. Ascending and descending, our C scale, concert F. If you need to breathe, you should breathe at the top of the scale, after that top C, and then go down. So I'll play it first, breathing right there as an example, and then we'll do the whole entire scale together, slurred. One, two, we're ready. C scaled slur. One, two, we're ready. Awesome. Now with scales, it's important to practice them in a variety of ways. So this next one through. Let's practice the whole scale with a legato tongue. So thinking da, da, da. Legato meaning the notes are still connected, but we are attacking each one. All right, I'll play that first as an example, then we'll play it together. Legato tongued C scale. One, two, we're ready. change the pattern of the scale, let's do a different rhythm. Let's do it da 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 So a little bit faster tonguing, just remember to focus on your core support and your air so that all of these notes sing out really beautifully. I'll play it first. One, two, ready. Let's do it together. One, two, ready. Now let's do that same rhythm but staccato. Staccato meaning light and separated, okay? It doesn't mean light, but it, that's how I think of it when I think of articulating it because it's really easy to tongue staccato notes too hard. Duh, duh, duh. You don't want to do that. You still want your tongue to ride on your air 
but just each note should have space between it. Da, 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 da. I'll play this first. One, two, ready. <laughs> every scale as you learn it in different ways so you can practice being flexible and being able to do things sort of on the fly like that and being comfortable with playing things in a variety of styles. So moving forward, the next thing we are going to talk about are key signatures. Now key signatures are just the piece of notation at the beginning of a piece of music right after the clef but before the time signature that tells us how many sharps or flats we're dealing with which gives us a big hint as to one of two keys we could be playing in. So for example, in the key of F, we have one flat, B flat. If you see one flat, it's always going to be a B flat and it's always going to be in the key of F. The order that the sharps or flats appear is always the same. You're never gonna see the first flat beyond the F line or you're never gonna see the first sharp beyond the B line. They always go in the same order which is really helpful for memorizing. And that actually brings us to the next topic that sort of loops into this one, which is our circle of fifths. And I brought it up here just so I could make sure I was going the right direction in the mirror. So the circle of fifths is what this, this diagram is called if you move clockwise in direction, okay? For the circle of fifths, each key to the right adds a sharp. So the key we were just playing in, C major, has no sharps or flats. It's the only major key that has no sharps or flat. But there is another key that shares that same key signature, and that is the parallel minor key. I don't know if you can see here, A minor, which we'll go over in a second. But so each key signature has a major key and a minor key associated with it, and they share the same key signature. So the minor key that shares the same key signature as a major key is called the parallel minor. Keys are parallel if they share the same key signature. So A is the parallel minor of C major because they share the same key signature. A minor is the parallel minor to C major because they both have no sharps or flats in the key signature. Now scooching along, Usually string players are the ones to add sharps, but that's just the way we read the circle of fifths is adding sharps first. So you can see that the one sharp in the key of G, which will always be F sharp, is to the right because it's one sharp, then two sharps, then three, four, five. And here at the bottom, these keys are enharmonic. So B, the key of B is the same sounding as C flat just we label the notes differently, depending. Just like F sharp is the same as G flat, just like C sharp is the same as D flat, these would all sound the same, it's just how we label and name the notes. So an enharmonic pitch, like G sharp and A flat are enharmonic. Pitches can be enharmonic, but these keys at the bottom are also enharmonic keys. So we scooch along the circle of fifths, we're always adding sharps until we can't anymore. And then, then we start coming back with the flats. Another way to read this is to start at the top, and instead of going clockwise, go counterclockwise. This becomes the circle of fourths, and we add a flat to the fourth scale degree of every key. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So if we read it this way, the circle of fifths, always adding a sharp and always a fifth apart. C to G, G to D, D to A. C to G, C, D, E, F, G, that's a fifth apart. G to D, G, A, B, C, D, a perfect fifth apart. So that's how they got the names going that way. And it shows you that with each fifth apart we go, in each key, we add a sharp. Now going this way with our flats, you'll notice like we talked about, Here's the first flat for B flat, and going each way in this direction, we add a flat, and it becomes the circle of fourths. So this is just a good tool to think about. You've probably seen them before. I know it can be a little blurry on my screen, 
but that helps inform us of the relations of keys to each other. All right, so now let's practice our A natural minor scale, no sharps or flats in the key signature. So starting on A, much like we took the other scale, let's do the first five notes. So these are going to be A, B, C, D, E, stop. So A one and two, B middle valve, C, open, D, first, E. I'll play it first. I'm just going to slur those first five notes. One, two, three, stop. <laughs> Join in this time. One, two, we're ready. And one more time. One, two, we're ready. Great. Now, starting on that E, let's take it all the way to that top. So E, F, G, A. I'll play third. Ready? One more time together. Ready? Good. Now let's take the whole ascending half of that scale, the whole first half. Um, A, B, C. G, E, F, G, A. Remember to use our air to support us through this. We're going to slur it to start. One, two, we're ready. You can join in if you didn't that time. One, two, we're ready. you can already hear that sort of spooky quality or why people would sort of associate it with more sad feelings. Minor scales are usually the, or minor keys rather, are usually the key of the music that accompanies sad things and makes us think of sad things for some reason. You can already hear it even in the scale. Now let's start at that nice comfortable A and take the first four notes down the scale. So just the same chunk that we took ascending. G, A, F, E. I'll play first. Let's play it together. Ready? Great. Now let's take E down the rest of the scale, E, D, C, B, A. So those last five notes down the scale. I'll go first. And let's play it together. Ready? Now let's take the whole descending half of the scale all the way down, starting on that nice comfortable A, going all the way down the scale, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. I'll go first. One. Let's do it together. One, two, ready. And one last time, the descending half. Ready? Great. Now that we practiced it in little chunks, let's link our entire A natural minor scale together. So we'll start in the first, in the first A and descend and descend. Remember, if you want to take a breath in the scale, a really good spot to do it is after the top note. Let's slur this way up. 
and the way down. Let's slur the whole scale for now. One, two, you ready? So now that we know our A natural minor scale, it's good, like we did with the other scale, to practice this with a variety of rhythms and articulations. So to start, let's practice this scale with the quarter note eighth note scale pattern. Da, 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 da. But let's slur it so it'll sound like this. <laughs> Sorry, there's some water in my horn. Make sure when we go to play this, we get a really good breath from the beginning and that we're using our air to get us through that whole phrase. Let's try together. One, two, you ready? <laughs> Let's tongue it with a nice legato tongue. Da, 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 da. Make sure that your air is going through each note and that your tongue is not, you're not tonguing too hard. Try to have your tongue right on your air. One, two, you ready? Good, let's do that one more time. One, two, you ready? Good. Now let's try staccato tongued. So each note will be nice and separated. We're going to still be tonguing nice and light. Each note's going to have a little bit of space between it. Let's keep that same rhythm. One, two, ready. <laughs> time. One, two, ready. Great. Another way that people like to practice scales is in a sort of swung pattern. So this time, let's slur it, but let's play the scale like this. Together? Ready? Awesome, let's do the same thing, tongue each note. One, two, ready. One more time, ready. There's a variety of ways to practice scales. I should also let you know that these scales that we play today aren't just available in one octave to us. That C scale, there's actually an octave below and an octave above the C scale that we practice today. It's always good to try to expand your range a little bit each day and keep working either up or down. So just because the scale is written in one octave, there's usually nearby another octave written as well. That'll give you a little bit um, more information to try to stretch your range. Just make sure you're always making sounds the right way and try not to tense up or anything like that. Um, there's also um, an A natural minor scale above and below this octave of the one we just played as well. It gets into our pedal range and up into our upper tessitura, but both are good to work towards, especially if you're really trying to develop your skills as a horn player. So here are just a few final thoughts wrapping up for today. I know we discussed a lot for today, and there's actually 
it's kind of like Pandora's box when you start to talk about theory because learning one thing only kind of opens the doors to learning about a lot more things. Uh, one final music theory sort of trick I wanted to share as far as finding the relative minor of a major key is that the relative minor will be the scale that starts on the sixth scale degree of the major key. So that was a lot. If you start on C and we're in the key of C and we go up six notes, the sixth note will be the key of the relative minor. So for C, C, D, E, F, G, A is the sixth note. And that was also the scale that we were studying for the natural minor. So the sixth note of the C scale, um, the sixth note of the C major scale will be A, which is C major's relative minor scale. Now, there's different types of minor scales like we talked about. There's also different relationships of minor scales. So we were talking a lot about the relative minor today, uh, the scale that shares the same key signature. There's also the parallel minor, and that's the scale that starts on the same note as the major scale, but has a different key signature. It'll have three more flats, and that's a whole nother um, can of worms to open up right now, but it's just good to hear these terms for the first time and just be aware that there is, of course, there's minor scales that start on the same pitches as our major scales. They will just have different key signatures, and their relationship will be a parallel minor or major relationship. So thank you guys for tuning in today. I hope there was something for you to sort of catch on to and help you with your horn playing moving forward. And I'll see you next week for more mini masterclasses.